the Rangers rode into Cleveland riding their best series win of the year. What do they do? They get swept themselves. They did get some good news, however, from the farm system this weekend. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Paddock, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan, covering the team for 10 seasons, including hosting all five seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Today is Monday, September 18th. Your Rangers are 82 and 67, holding that third wild card spot and still a game and a half back of the Houston Astros in the AOS. Thank y'all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Paddock. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Subscribe on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to come comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into today's show, the mind-numbingly weird, frustrating, annoying series from this weekend, this episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper Picks, and you could win up to a 100 times your payout. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Now, this was, I think, I, I don't know. I don't even know what to make of this team after this weekend. I mean, they come in riding a six-game winning streak. You mop the Toronto Blue Jays. You destroy their pitching staff. The offense looks so completely back. The starting rotation looks pretty darn good. And then you head into Cleveland, a mid, as mid a team as there is in Major League Baseball, and you get your butts whooped. An absolutely embarrassing fashion. This was not a close series. The Rangers should have won at least one of these games. They should have probably won all three, but I'll give them Friday night. I will give them that at a weird travel day, international travel. And for some reason, the Rangers had to play a night game on Thursday. And instead of getting a, a getaway day game in that series finale, don't know why, but you know, that's fine. They're only in the middle of a, uh, what, seven game road trip and 13 games in 13 days down the stretch towards the end of the season. But you know, it's fine. You have one of those days where just everything goes wrong. John Gray doesn't look like himself. Then you put in Andrew Keeney, and he gets absolutely annihilated in two innings of work. Then you put in Ian Kennedy because you're hoping for something, and he gets lit up as well. And that is, I believe, his last outing on the season as he has been placed on the 60-day IL. Jake Latz, the left-handed pitcher, has been called up, and uh, good for him. He's not making his Major League debut this weekend, but he is back in the majors for the first time since I believe 2019. Um, and he did it at the same place where he made his major league debut, um, which was a start against the Cleveland guardians back in the day. So it's been, it's been quite a while for Jake Latz. Um, actually it might've been 2021. It's, it's been a hot minute for Jake Latz being up in the big leagues and he's a different pitcher. Now he's a reliever. He's a lefty he throws mid nineties. And I, I think he can help this team. I was surprised he wasn't called up a little bit earlier. They called up Ian Kennedy, but you know, here we are. This is what this team is. And what this team is is incredibly confusing because that Friday game, it just kind of felt like one of those days where nothing was going to go right for the Rangers. You're facing off against Lucas Giolito, who the stupid angels designated for assignment because they put him on waivers because Artie Moreno wanted to save a few bucks because why not? And Giolito had been uh, pretty, pretty good for the Chicago White Sox and then pretty darn bad for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And then for his first couple of starts with the Guardians, he was terrible, just absolutely terrible. But what does he do in this one? Seven shutout innings, two hits, one walk, 12 strikeouts. Looks absolutely incredible. Gets just the most generous strike zone I've seen in a long time. And Bruce Bochy had the audacity to call him out on it, on on this. And uh, he, got, he got yelled at because, of course, he did. But, I mean, the rest of his offense didn't do much of anything anyway. I mean, just absolutely lifeless offense got to the point where the Rangers took out their starters. The Rangers did that twice in the series. And that's, that's a real indication of how bad this was. Marcus Simeon was taken out twice. I know Marcus Simeon hates it. He wasn't even taken out of the game on his birthday because the Rangers getting blown out so badly on Sunday. This is just such a frustrating series. And you go, okay, well shake that one off. You had a six game winning streak. Like those games are bound to happen. The Rangers haven't been blown out very often. It, 
it happens to even the really great teams. Then you go in on Saturday's game. You have Dane Dunning on the hill, and he was a little shaky, worked around quite a few base runners, but was able to get out of it five scoreless innings, and you throw in Martin Fien Perez in there for an inning and two-thirds of scoreless baseball. You think, okay, things are going well. You put in Will Smith. He gets you a couple outs, then gives up a couple of base runners, and the clerk comes in and lets it all up. Rangers had a one-run lead, which, again, you probably should have had more than one run. I mean, I know Tanner Bybee is a, is a really good rookie, and there's a lot of really good pitchers on this Cleveland staff. But still, the Rangers just annihilated the Blue Jays staff, which had the second-best ERA in baseball heading into that four-game series in Toronto. The Rangers just battered them. Maybe should have saved some of their runs for this series against against Cleveland. Like It's just so incredibly confusing and frustrating because, I mean— the big boys, the big hitters in in this offense were pretty mid to terrible in this series. Seager, Simeon, Garver, and Haim combined to go 4 for 37 in this series. We got back-to-back 0 for 4 days from Corey Seager. I mean, that is not something that happens very often, if ever, this season. I actually don't think it's happened at all this season. There's only been a couple one time where he had gone back-to-back games where he did not have a hit, and that was one of the games where he was pulled early, which I guess also happened in the Saturday and Sunday combined games. He only had one hit this series, which was a double in the first game of the series, but just not a great showing for the Rangers in general. It's just embarrassing, confusing, frustrating. I mean, not having a great start from John Gray on that Friday game, I mean, it happens. He wasn't terrible the Rangers pulled them pretty early but the bullpen I mean you go to Andrew Heaney early in that in that situation and when he gets lit up for six runs in two innings like that that just cannot happen it cannot happen to this team that was riding a six game winning streak and if they had taken that win then they would have led the AL West they would have led the AL West heading into Saturday but they didn't because they got lit up and they had just A terrible overall pitching performance, terrible overall offensive performance. It's just these chances don't come along very often. They do not happen every single day. And for the Rangers, who should have taken two out of three in this series, should have absolutely at least gotten one and still been, you know, half a game out of the Astros in the AL West heading into this week. They aren't because they just absolutely pooped the bed this weekend in the most embarrassing fashion in a series they really needed very badly. Coming up, we're going to look at some good news the Rangers got from this week, hopefully some reinforcements on the way, and what the Rangers need to do to figure things out down the stretch. But first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment that you need. Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form and one of Jace Medical's board-certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then Jace will send you your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled at filled and mailed directly to your home. You can also send a message to a physician anytime for answers for treatment related questions any single time. So everyone should be empowered for the, to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical Plus an additional $20 off by using code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Shout out to the Darius for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day on tomorrow's show. We'll be breaking down game one of this series with the Red Sox. The Rangers take on the Red Sox this week and catch every pitch with the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, this is an incredibly frustrating weekend, but the good news for the Rangers is that the AOS is... Uh, It's looking like it might be a mid-off down the stretch. The Rangers lost all three games to the Guardians, and the the Mariners got swept by an equally good opponent, the Los Angeles Dodgers. And the Astros went to Kansas City, and they lost two out of three to the Royals, the now worst team in baseball after the A's recent uh, stretch of, of being competent fun, scrappy, the team that I thought they were going to be all year instead of the absolutely dead horse that was beaten by pretty much everybody in the entirety of Major League Baseball season. But the A's are, 
are figuring it out at the right time, the right time for the Rangers of taking two out of three against the Astros. I mean, I, I said when I, I did my episode a couple weeks ago about five things that will determine the AOS and the A's being one of them, they are proving that to be true because the A's take on the Mariners this week in Oakland and the Mariners are riding a three-game losing streak where they, they did get beaten by all three, uh, by the Dodgers in all three games, and there's not really a lot of shame in that. But the way that they, the fight that they put up was just absolutely lacking in fight. The at-bats were just bad. And it looks like this Mariners team, as soon as they get behind in a game, they are just pretty much out of it, which is is not what you want if you are a Seattle Mariners fan. It is what you want if you're a Rangers fan, because the Rangers still have a one-game lead for that third wild card, they are half a game behind Toronto because after the Rangers just laid a hurtin' on the Blue Jays, they turned around and swept the Boston Red Sox, who are coming to town, riding that three-game losing streak. It might be more. I don't remember if they won or lost in the game before that series in Toronto, but it doesn't really matter. The Rangers need to take care of business against this Red Sox team that is really in a free fall. I mean, they are still not technically eliminated from contention. They are not eliminated from wildcard contention just yet. The Guardians somehow aren't. Even the Tigers still are mathematically alive for that final wildcard spot. But the Rangers, if they want to hold on to it, I mean, they've got a good path to do it. They've got seven out of 10 games against the Mariners who are struggling and the Rangers who are if they can write the ship against Boston, they really need to write the ship against Boston. They really need some reinforcements for their offense. I know it's, it's weird to say that after a series where they scored 35 runs in four games against Toronto, but after what Cleveland did to them and granted it was some pretty good Cleveland pitchers. I mean, Giolito has been a mess this season, but he's definitely got the capable of the game that he threw on Friday. It wasn't like completely out of the blue and they had two really good rookie pitchers go on Saturday and Sunday, which fine, but still you should be getting things right. And hopefully Boston is the team to get things right against. And if it's not them, then the Rangers will be hopefully getting some reinforcements by the end of this week, maybe even in the middle of this week. Josh Young had a really great rehab day on Sunday and he will be rejoining the team today, Monday, as you are listening to this very exciting news for him. He could be activated during the series. Not entirely sure. The original prognosis was six weeks after the broken thumb surgery. The six-week mark will be on Wednesday. So they're hoping at the latest to have him activated by this weekend series against the Mariners at home. And they're thinking hopefully that's about the time that Adoles Garcia is going to be back as well. He has started taking some swings and he has also started running. The Rangers don't want to just activate him to be a DH because they have Mitch Garver there in that DH role, and Mitch Garver is absolutely crushing it outside of this series in Cleveland. But for basically since July 4th, Mitch Garver has been absolutely on fire, and the Rangers have needed every bit of his bat to come up in a big, big way. And, you know, there are some other young guys we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on that I, I think... I don't think you're going to make their major league debuts this year, but are making their triple A debuts. It's looking like, and uh, that was definitely some positive news from the weekend, but this weekend was just full of net negatives. Cody Bradford made the start on Sunday's game and he was just absolutely cruising through three innings and then just really hit a wall. I was tweeting about how I thought, give this guy a spot in the rotation next year. He might actually be the first decent homegrown starting pitcher the Rangers have had in the longest of times. And, uh, well, immediately after I said that, he just went in the absolute tank, gave up a mammoth home run to Jose Ramirez on his birthday. Happy belated birthday to Jose Ramirez. And also happy belated birthday to Marcus Simeon and Patrick Mahomes, all of whom have the same birthday. I don't, I don't know what to do with that information, but, I mean here we are. The birthdays were very, very different for Ramirez and Marcus Simeon. Marcus went 0 for 4 and was taken out late in this one because the Rangers gave up nine runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Nine runs. In came Jonathan Hernandez to allegedly stop the bleeding, and he did no such thing. He threw a lot more pitches than I thought he was going to. 41 pitches for him, and Bradford was was coming off Thursday game where he was the piggyback starter for Nathan Evaldi and he looked fantastic in that one. He looked fantastic in this one for the first three innings and was getting all kinds of swings and misses and called strikes on his fastball and on his changeup. Just looked really, really good. And here comes the the Cleveland Guardians offense, the most one of the more hapless offenses in Major League Baseball that drops a nine spot on the Rangers in this one. They also dropped twelve in the Friday game and. Two was all it took to to sink the Rangers on Saturday when the Rangers just could not get it done. I mean, 
this is the way like that's the way baseball go like that that is this is the ex- exact extent of that's the way baseball go the last seven days of texas rangers baseball the last heck nine days and they had a six game winning streak right into a three game losing streak and that was before the six game winning streak they had a four game losing streak where they got absolutely their brains beat now this this series against cleveland and that series against houston those those are the only real series where the rangers have just been absolutely drubbed annihilated and if you want to get your you got to get all of your bad out in the series this has got to be the last like bed crapping the rangers have if they want to even make the playoffs because you got seven out of your last 10 against Seattle. You got three in the middle there against the angels who will not have Shohei Otani. It seems like for the rest of the year, he has packed up his stuff and gone home and said, adios. I gave you my all. I tore my UCL for you. I sacrificed probably a decent chunk of change. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, we won't see until December rolls around, but I mean, the Rangers cannot afford any slips in the last 13 games. You got three against Boston, you got seven against the Mariners, three against the Angels, and you've got to take advantage of every single one of them. This is this has got to be it. It is, it has been like nut up or shut up time for weeks now, and the Rangers have done both. Surprisingly, I mean, it's just very very confusing about this team. But they did, hopefully, they they do have some some positive bright things on the future coming up we're going to talk a little bit about some key minor league promotions and is it time for Wyatt Langford to join the Texas Rangers in the major leagues all that and more first for from our sponsors This episode is brought to you by Sleeper. The MLB playoffs are around the corner, which means the clock is ticking on your chance to win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy baseball. Baseball has never been more exciting than it is now with studs like Acuna, Betts, Otani, and Seager. You know, pick more or less for these stat categories like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and more for up to a 100 times payout on Sleeper. Get your picks right and you could win big. You're betting for a bounce back series for Corey Seager coming back to Globe Life Field. Maybe he'll hit a home run against Cutter Crawford in the Monday game or Tanner Houck in the second game or Brian Bayo in in the last game. Well, if you want to do that, go to Sleeper, check it out, use promo code locked on. You'll get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Shout out to David Davis for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day on Wednesday's show. I'll be looking more at the series and hopefully the, the first game, first AAA game of Wyatt Langford. The Rangers take on the Red Sox this week and catch every pitch on the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, like I just said, Wyatt Langford is headed AAA and so is Jack Leiter. Jack Leiter's time in AA Frisco is hopefully done maybe forever um, but at least for this year I'm not sure exactly when Jack Leiter will pitch he is not going to be activated immediately on Tuesday when the AAA Round Rock Express have their first game of a six game series in Tacoma but Wyatt Langford sure will be and what a freaking first season for Wyatt Langford he finished up his time in Frisco 12 games 54 plate appearances he had four home runs three doubles 11 walks to seven strikeouts. Oh, and I believe three of those were in the final game. He had an 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. So uh, maybe he's actually cooked. But he had a slash line in those 12 games in Frisco of 405, 519, 762, a 12. 12- 80 OPS, which is the highest of any of his three stations, including the three games he spent in the Arizona Complex League. In his minor league career so far, he's got 39 games, 174 plate appearances. During that time, he's got nine stolen bases, just three times caught stealing, 30 walks to 28 strikeouts, 10 home runs, two triples, 14 doubles, a slash line of 359, 471, 697. That is an 1169 OPS in just under 40 games. And he is already on his fourth team as a minor leaguer. I mean, the adjustment this guy is making is incredible. He's laying off a lot of low breaking pitches away. That was his biggest flaw, his biggest um, thing that he needed to fix and, and work on, as well as his defense, his reads in left field are still aren't super great. And I think he's got the athleticism to be just fine out there. His arm seems fine. He's, he's pretty fast. He's pretty uh, nimble on the base pass as well. I mean, I like seeing him be aggressive on the base pass and, and go try and get some stolen bases. Uh, just use that speed. I don't think he's going to be playing center field for the Rangers because the Rangers have 
two options that are ahead of him in Evan Carter and Leo Tavares. Both of those guys are much better defensively. And I think Carter um, is a, a little more polished offensively, which is why he is up at this point. But I mean, I've been saying for what months ever since basically he made his debut. It's, I guess it's been maybe a month and a half since he made his, his minor league debut of no, the Rangers are not calling up white Langford. Stop that. The Rangers are not the angels. They're not that desperate, but with each level that he, just absolutely annihilates. If he starts crushing it at Triple A Round Rock, the Rough Rider, or the Round Rock Express have six games left in their regular season. Then they have made the playoffs. So we'll see how long they get to play in the playoffs there. But I don't know. It's it's making me feel like I'm kind of crazy for for thinking actually maybe he could help this team in the majors. But then you look at the reality. You look at the actuality. The, the players that are that are there. I mean, Adolis Garcia is is coming back. Friday. I don't see the Rangers promoting White Langford if he has like two really great games in AAA. Like that's that's just not going to happen. But this always felt like a likely promotion winner whenever he put up these insane numbers at AA to say, all right, let's get him a few more at bats. He's had quite a few at bats this season. He's got 303 plate appearances at Florida this year. And then in the minors, he's got 174 plate appearances. So that's what, 400 and 77 plate appearances so far this year so just a couple extra couldn't hurt just to get him used to what it's like to have that many games that many plate appearances under his belt it was 64 games in florida and 39 games so far in the minors so he is just over 100 games in total for the season if you are counting college and the minor leagues but i i don't see the rangers promoting him this year to the big leagues but i think it's definitely not out of the question next year for him to fight for that everyday left field job. Like, I think it's going to be a real question as to what the Rangers outfield will look like next year because he keeps making these adjustments. He keeps mashing at every single level. And if he does it again in AAA, like my hype levels for White Langford are going to be off the freaking charts. Like, I'm going to be banging the drum for him to be the number one overall prospect in baseball and right up there with Jackson Holiday. And Jackson Holiday is a teenager who got drafted uh, what a year and a half ago two years ago now and he is already in triple a which is nuts and also he plays shortstop and he also might be the best hitter in the minor leagues i think white langford is i think white langford is the best hitter in the minor leagues right now which is absolutely bonkers to say i mean the rangers just got so incredibly lucky to you know, jump up there in to the number four pick after having the seventh worst record. And they got incredibly lucky for Max Clark to not be drafted by the Tigers. Thank you, Tigers, for for passing on Wyatt Langford, because if he was making these kind of adjustments, I've seen it's not just me saying this. This is other prospect value, actual prospect values who are much smarter than me saying this guy would have been the clear number one overall pick in this draft above Dylan Cruz, above above um, who am I thinking of? Give me just a second. Um, the Paul Skeens. <laughs> Why am I blanking on Paul Skeens' names? Not, uh, proper nouns are, are hard. They evade me at times, as, as you can tell if you've listened to this podcast for a while. But Wyatt Langford, like, have yourself a freaking debut. Just getting up to AAA is incredibly impressive. And even if he has, you know, a rough couple of games out of the, what, six or 10 or 15, however many games he actually ends up playing in Round Rock. That is a huge, huge feather in his cap, a huge feather in the Rangers' cap just to get him. I don't think it was any choice once he fell down to there at the Rangers at number four. There was no there was no chance he was getting past the Rangers at number four. This was a great pick, great luck, and great work by Wyatt Langford to make these adjustments, to work his butt off, to have this kind of success at the minor league level so quickly. And just going from team to team to team. I went, he went from Arizona to Carolina to Texas to, um, well, I guess he's going to be in Tacoma for this week with the AAA. Um, but eventually he'll go back to Round Rock, just moving all over the place and didn't really even have time to get settled in Frisco. He got to say, hey, here's, here's where we're going to be, hopefully for the long haul in this general metroplex of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He got 12 games there and half of those were on the road. Like just just nuts that this guy is having this level of success and not to be breezed over 
but I think it's equally as impressive and maybe a better sign overall for the Rangers that Jack Leiter is also earning a promotion to AAA Round Rock. This is fantastic news. It comes off of his final start in AA. Hopefully, he will not be back there next season. I was talking with somebody on Twitter. Um, they're asking, well, do you think Jack Leiter is going to start next year in AA? And I wasn't really sure. I thought, it's it's possible it's possible they start him there for a couple of starts just let him go back have some success dominate double eight hitters because he hasn't really had a prolonged stretch he had the month of may this year and then i think there was like a month last year but there hasn't been a prolonged stretch of him dominating in the minor leagues this is as close as he got when he came off the development list he pitched five games and he looked honestly four stars excuse me looked way better just way way better the things that i was mainly watching once he got got off the development list was is he going to keep walking anybody is he gonna or everybody is he gonna be able to hit his own is he not gonna miss glove side every time with his fastball and in four starts he pitched 16 in the third innings just four walks to 25 strikeouts a 331 era that is exactly what the Rangers wanted from him. They wanted him to get right. It was just mechanical tweaks of just making sure that he could be able to repeat his delivery and you know hit his spots more effectively. The thing that really concerns me with Owen White, why I'm more worried about him than I ever was about Jack Leiter, because Jack Leiter's stuff never backed up. He was always throwing mid to upper 90s. The Breaking balls were still very, very good. We'll see how good that cutter ends up being or how good the changeup ends up being, but the slider and curveball and fastball are all very, very good pitches. Could be double-plus pitches at the big league level, but he had to command them, and the walks were an issue for him at Vanderbilt. They have been an issue for him in AA so far, and just letting him take that time off, go rework things, and the Rangers saying, we feel confident in this guy. I mean... He is your best great hope for a half-decent starting homegrown pitcher for the first time since forever, (laughs) since the 90s. He could be the best one there, which he doesn't have to be a Cy Young winner. Like, that's that's not what the expectations are for Jack Lyer. Just go out there, be a decent homegrown starter. I think he could make this rotation at some point next year. Still a decent way to go. Still, it's only four starts and 16 and third innings, but these are the kind of tweaks that you've been looking for Jack Leiter to make all this time since you have drafted him, and it is a hugely great sign that the Rangers desperately need. There is so much bad news with all of their starting pitching prospects this year. Cole Wynn, it seems like, I I don't know what's wrong with him. He might be going to, like, he's not going to be on the 40-man protected this offseason, and I don't think anybody's going to draft him in the Rule 5 draft because he has just been an absolute mess. Owen White stuff has backed up tremendously all year, and he is not having the same level of success. Kumar Rocker looked great until he had Tommy John surgery. Brock Porter has been a pretty good, pretty good sign, but he is still in low A and still has quite a few adjustments to go before he is anywhere close to the big leagues, which that's fine. It's a good first season for Brock Porter. But Jack Leiter, after the incredible frustration it has been for him the last two years to see him have this success, I was kind of worried about even bringing him back. I said, just, you know what? Let him have those tweaks. Let him, you know, think everything's fine. But if you bring him back and he hasn't fixed the things that you want him to fix, that is going to be a lot for him to stew on heading into his second professional offseason. But hey, this is great momentum for him. I think he might get one start in AAA, maybe two. But still, this is a huge development for the Rangers who need him very badly. I mean, the fact that I was screaming and banging the drum for Cody Bradford needs to be in the starting rotation next year because the Rangers need to have at least one homegrown starting pitcher um, because you can't buy an entirely new, new rotation every single offseason, which maybe you can, but we'll see. But Jack Leiter, great news for him, great news for White Langford. I still come to the conclusion with Langford, it's not time for him. The Rangers are not going to bring him up in the middle of a playoff chase. I mean, like there's like a maybe a 3% chance that that, that happens, but you still have Evan Carter. You still have Robbie Grossman, who's swinging a really great bat. You got Adolis Garcia coming back. You got Leody Tavares, who is also still very, very hot. You're just not going to have to force him in there. And unless he is, you know, hits like 600 or whatever for a week or two in AAA, I just don't see it happening. Next year, all fair game. I think he's definitely, he might end up being the Rangers everyday left fielder from opening day next year. But at this point, 
it's a little too much. Just celebrate the success. Celebrate the good things coming from your prospects in Jack Whiter, in Wyatt Langford, because those are great. And then figure your crap out. Get your two all-stars back. Get healthy, because these last 13 games are going to be an absolutely wild ride, and you have to make the most of every single one of them. Because, like I said, the AL West is a mid-off right now. If you can out-mid or just be above average down the stretch, maybe you could still take that AL West crown from those stinking Houston Astros. Thank you all so much for listening, making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy Playoff Chase Texas Rangers baseball.